If you enjoyed Stephen King, horror films, science fiction books, or the television program Supernatural, you've likely heard of the Wendigo. But do you know where, or more importantly, from whom did this story originate? Let us give you a hint. It surely wasn't in a writer's room at Warner Brothers. The Wendigo originates from the spiritual practices of indigenous peoples who once lived over much of the northeastern shore and the continent's interior, particularly around the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River. The population is a diverse mixture of several different cultures and nationalities and speaks several related dialects of the Algonquian language. As a result, they're often referred to as Algonquian people. According to legend, the Wendigo was once a hunter who got lost. The man's extreme hunger over a brutally severe winter led to cannibalism. After devouring the flesh of another person, he changed into a raving man-beast that prowled the forest looking for more humans to eat. Another narrative version claims that the first Wendigo was a warrior who struck a contract with the devil. As a result, he lost his soul and was changed into a Wendigo to save his clan. However, when peace ensued, there was no need for such a fearsome creature, and the warrior was banished from his tribe and forced to live as an outcast. That was a brief overview for those who closed the video within two minutes. Yes, we know about you. Let's dive deeper into Wendigo's story for our amazing viewers who want to know the gist of the story. According to several witnesses who have claimed to have seen it, the creature is a relative of Bigfoot. However, according to other accounts, it is more like a werewolf. Most Wendigo sightings have been reported in Canada and colder northern U.S. states like Minnesota since the creature is thought to thrive in cold climates. The Algonquin tribes attributed Wendigo assaults to several inexplicable disappearances at the start of the 20th century. Despite being a voracious predator, the Wendigo is not the biggest or strongest animal. Although close to 15 feet tall, he is frequently referred to as having an emaciated physique. This may be explained by the idea that he never feels satisfied by his cannibalistic cravings. Instead, obsessed with hunting for new victims, he is forever hungry until he's eating another person. According to ethno-historian Nathan Carlson, the creature is also rumored to have enormous razor-sharp claws and eyes resembling owls. However, some other people simply describe it as a skeleton-like figure with ash-toned skin. But no matter which version sounds the most plausible, this is obviously not a creature you'd want to run into on a hike. The Wendigo's agility and speed are described differently in various versions of the mythology. He is said to be extraordinarily fast and able to walk for extended periods, even in chilly winter weather. Others claim he walks more shakily, as if he's falling apart. But speed wouldn't be a necessary skill for a monster of this nature. Unlike other dreadful carnivores, it does not depend on pursuing its victim to catch and consume it. His ability to imitate human sound is actually one of the most terrifying characteristics. He draws people away from civilization by luring them in with his talent, assaults them, and then feasts on them once he has cornered them in the forest's barren depths. Now, wait, what if you simply ignore these calls? Wouldn't that save you from this horrific creature? Well, don't be fooled into believing you're safe indoors. The Wendigo has the ability to open doors and enter houses, where it would kill and consume the occupants before transforming the buildings into Wendigo homes for hibernation. So can you outgun a Wendigo if you can't outrun one? Not quickly. A Wendigo that is hurt regenerates. Most Native American folklore describes a Wendigo's physical appearance resembling a person's. It grows bigger and bigger with time. The Wendigo is said to have a heart of ice and a voracious appetite for flesh that causes it to eat its lips off. The secret is to pierce the Wendigo's icy heart using silver bullets, a pure silver sword, or a stake. Upon wounding its heart, you must take care to shatter it into pieces. Then lock the broken heart in a silver box and bury it in a church cemetery. Not one to seek an easy end, the Wendigo's remaining parts must be severed with a silver-plated axe before the body can be salted, burned, and its ashes sent to the winds. Alternatively, you might bury the parts in a far-off place. According to the Alonquian people, a significant portion of their population vanished at the turn of the 20th century. The Wendigo was known as the Spirit of Lonely Places by the tribes who ascribed many mysterious disappearances to him. The word Wendigo is sometimes loosely translated as the wicked spirit that devours people. 
This translation has something to do with yet another variation of the Wendigo, which has the ability to possess people and curse them. Once he has gained access to their brains, he may also transform them into Wendigos by instilling a similar need for human flesh. Whether you think the Wendigo stalks the woods at night or not, this isn't simply another boogeyman tale designed to frighten people without any justification. For many indigenous tribes, it also has historical importance. Wendigo mythology has a long history linked to contemporary issues like violence, avarice, and selfishness. It also has something to do with the numerous cultural taboos against these harmful activities and behaviors. The myths and legends of the Wendigo reflect a lot about the values, lifestyles, social systems, and cultural practices of the people who tell them. Some people use Wendigo stories as a reminder of the importance of community, and more crucially, of the potential consequences of excluding people from it. Extreme hunger, cold, and isolation are three factors that can create Wendigo. For many First Nations people living in the northern boreal forests, these factors were constant and dangerous realities of existence. In fact, most Wendigo tales begin with a person or small group being stranded for a long time in the forest without food, by themselves, or in the cold. It was rumored that Wendigos would kill lone travelers or a group member, briefly adopt their identity, and then kill any additional people they came across. Similarly, the legendary greed of the Wendigo symbolized attitudes of sharing in many indigenous communities. In the wild, community cooperation and sharing of resources were frequently necessary for human survival. Any person who resisted sharing community resources, particularly during times of severe scarcity, was seen as a monster. Sean Smallman, a historian, claims that the Wendigo is still viewed as a representation of greed in contemporary culture as it appears in capitalism and corporate consumerism. One of the most notable incidents of this creature is the tale of Swift Runner, a Native American who killed and ate his whole family during the winter of 1879 to 1880. According to Animal Planet, Swift Runner allegedly claimed to have been controlled by a Wendigo ghost when the killings were made, but he was nonetheless hanged for his crime. Some people think the human personality still lives inside the Wendigo, notably where the creature's heart should be. This person is frozen, and killing a Wendigo also necessitates killing the human inside it. A few legends state that the frozen person is successfully rescued from inside the creature. In most cases, however, death is the only way to free a person from the Wendigo. The Algonquin tribes attributed Wendigo assaults to some unsolved disappearance at the start of the 20th century. An 87-year-old man named Jack Fiddler went on trial for the murder of a woman at the turn of the 20th century. Even though he admitted to the crime, he defended himself by claiming that the victim was about to turn into a Wendigo because she was under the evil spirit's control. Therefore, she had to be put to death before she went on to slaughter more tribespeople. Fiddler claimed to have killed at least 13 more Wendigo in addition to this woman throughout his lifetime. However, believers claim that there are still Wendigos in the forests. A human man who was once merely a hungry hunter may still be hiding beneath that horrible flesh-eating beast. Horrifying, isn't it? Well, one thing isn't horrifying, and that is supporting mythical madness. So do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. We'll see you next time without an icy heart. Until then, stay mythically mad.